In this video, I will continue with repetition statements in Delphi. I will explain the repeat loop in the same project we started last time. We already explored for loops, and in the most recent lesson, we also explored while loops. And in the last video, we also looked at the differences and similarities of for loops and while loops. Today, we will add the T button to perform a repeat until loop that produces the same results as the other two loops. We will make comparisons between the three kinds of loops. And near the end of the lesson, I will also explain how you can decide which kind of loop is most appropriate for your application, and how to avoid a common issue with loops called infinite loops. Hi, it's Gerard here from Land Delphi. I'm a trainer in programming languages, and in this series, I help you to understand Delphi programming step by step and line by line. If this video is helpful to you, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And I also published all the links that I mentioned in this video in the description box below. In all our lessons, I start with the code immediately. I do not demonstrate how to create the graphical user interface. That is so that you only focus on the code of the lesson we are doing. But if you want to follow what I'm doing and you want to save some time, you can download the graphical user interface to start immediately where I start with this lesson. The start and solution project files are available for download from my Patreon page at patreon.com slash I also posted that link in the description. And I'm using the Alfie 10.3 Community Edition to demonstrate these lessons. There's also a link in the description if you want to download a free copy of Delphi. You can pause the video here, go do the downloads, then meet me here again and do this project with me. This is the starter project, open in Delphi. If you downloaded the starter files, open your project in Delphi and let's jump into it. We worked on this program last time. We have a button that performs a for loop and one that performs a while loop. Both buttons must cycle through base numbers 1 to 10 and calculate the square of the base numbers and display it in a list box. Let's quickly walk through the code again. Double click the for loop button. In this event handler for the on click event of BT and for loop, we cycled from 1 to 10 with a for loop. We calculated the square of the value in the counter variable. In other words, the squares of numbers 1 to 10, and then we display it in a panel. We do not use the ink procedure to increment the base number, because a for loop automatically assigns the next number when it returns to the top for the next cycle. Also notice that the value in int base number is checked at the top of the loop. In other words, it is checked before the compiler decides to enter the loop or not. Now scroll down a little bit. This is the event handler that handles the on-click event of the button named btn while loop. This while loop must produce the same output as the for loop. A while loop also does a check at the top before deciding if the loop must be entered or not. But the difference is that the while loop doesn't increment automatically, so it is not a counter-controlled loop. For that reason, we must increment the base number ourselves. Let's look at the result. Run the program. Click for loop. We get base numbers 1 to 10, and we also see the squares of those numbers. The first line here in the list box also shows that this was done with a for loop. Now click the while loop button. We get the same result, except for the first line that shows that this was done with a while loop. Now let's see if we can accomplish the same with a repeat until loop. Close the form. Click the design tab. Go to the component palette, and add another T button on your form. Go to the Object Inspector and change the caption property to Repeat Until. Scroll down to the Name property and change it to BTN Repeat Until. Now double click the button. Go above Begin. Type VAR. Enter and type INT Base Number comma, int square number, as integer. int base number must store numbers 1 to 10, and int square number must store the squares of the base numbers. Go under the begin statement, type int base number, colon equals 1. Press enter, type int square number, colon equals 1. Here we start both integers with 1. Enter and type LST result dot clear. Here we make sure we always start with a blank list box. Make a new line and type this statement.
press enter, type test statement. This statement will show the user what kind of loop is used. And this statement adds a blank line to the list box. Make a new line, type repeat, and press enter. Delphi adds an until statement. Go after until and type int base number equals 10. Now check how interesting this is. In for loops and while loops, we check the conditions at the top. In other words, the condition must be valid before the compiler enters the loop. But with the repeat until loop, the compiler enters the loop first, and only at the end of the cycle it checks the condition. That means a repeat until loop will always cycle at least once. Type this between the two statements. When the compiler enters the loop, it must calculate the square of the base number in int base number. And then it must assign the result to int square number. Press enter, type this statement. Here we convert int base number and int square number to strings and concatenate them with a literal string. Then we add it to the items of the list box. This is how it will look. Press enter, type ink and between brackets, int base number. A repeat until loop is not a counter controlled loop. In other words, it doesn't automatically increment its cycles. So we must do that manually with Delphi's ink procedure. Now run the program. Click repeat until. We only get base numbers 1 to 9. Let's see why this happened. Close the form. Here we start int base number with 1. So when the compiler enters the loop, it doesn't check the value in int base number yet. When it gets to this line, it displays 1 and the square of 1. Then it increments int base number to 2. Then only does it check that int base number is not equal to 10. If it is not equal to 10 yet, the compiler will jump back into the loop and do it all over again. By the time int base number is equal to 10, the compiler will exit the loop and not display the result of the last cycle. So we will only see results up to 9. We can move the ink procedure above this line. So we first increment the base number and thereafter we display it. Doing this will display number 10, but then number 1 will not be displayed. Because the loop will immediately increment 1 to 2 when the loop is entered the first time. So the list box will start displaying from number 2. To resolve this problem, we must experiment with the relational operator here at the bottom of the loop, where we check the condition. At the moment, we exit the loop when the base number is equal to 10. So we want to instruct the loop to continue cycling until int base number is greater than 10. Replace the equal sign with greater than. Run the program. Click repeat until. Now we get the correct result. The first line in the list box shows us that the button performed the repeat until loop. Click the for loop button. Now the first line in the list box shows us that this button performed the for loop. The rest is the same. Click the while loop button. And this time the first line in the list box shows us that this button performed the while loop. And the rest is also the same. As you can see, you can pretty much accomplish the same results with all three kinds of loops. We must only make sure that we check the correct conditions. So, which kind of loop is most appropriate to use, and how can you decide which kind of loop to use in your application? Let me explain it with three examples. Let's say we have a few friends that go out to a pizza restaurant. Sam is very hungry, so he will stuff himself until he's not hungry anymore. Jim is not so hungry, but he heard about the new Meat Supreme Pizza on the menu. He just wants to take a few bites to taste, and if he doesn't taste nice anymore, he wants to stop eating. Sally is hungry, but she's on a diet. She is only allowed to eat three slices. Then she reached the limit for the day. Sam will eat his pizza with a while loop. The loop will first check if he's still hungry. If so, he will take a bite. After that, he will decide if he's still hungry. If so, he will take another bite. And this will continue until he's not hungry anymore. Then he will stop eating. Jim will eat his pizza with a repeat until loop. He eats until the pizza doesn't taste good anymore. For him to know if he likes the pizza, he must take at least one bite. 
Only after the first bite, he will decide if he wants to take another bite. So he must enter the loop at least one time to first taste the pizza. Jim will continue eating until the pizza doesn't taste good anymore. And Sally will eat her pizza with a four loop. She is only allowed to eat three slices. So she eats the first slice, and after that she is allowed two more slices. She continues with the second and the third slices before she stops eating. So with these three examples, we see that different loops can be used for different purposes. It all depends on what you want to accomplish and how you set up your conditions, and whether the condition must be checked before the loop starts a cycle or after the cycle. But you must be careful you don't want to get tied up in infinite loops. An infinite loop is also called an endless loop. It happens when your logic is wrong, and the loop cannot exit because the condition to end the loop is never reached. Let me quickly show you. Go back to the project and close the form. Go to the repeat until loop and comment this statement where we increment the base number. Now this statement is invisible to Delphi's compiler. Run the program. Click repeat until. And now your program is frozen. Click the close button in the corner of the form. If you get this message box, select close this program. Let's see why we get this problem. Our code never increments int base number, so it will always stay 1 in this case. That means that we will never reach a value of greater than 10 to exit the loop, and that is why we encountered an endless loop. Remove the two slashes to fix the problem. When we learn error handling and debugging in future lessons, I will show you how to use the built-in debugging tools to step through code structures line by line to help you to identify logical errors. This concludes our lessons about repetition statements in Delphi. In the next few lessons, we will explore arrays in Delphi code. If you had fun with this project, leave a comment. And if you learned something new, please like, subscribe and share my lessons with your friends. Thank you for watching, and a special thank you to my supporters on Patreon.com. Happy coding! See you next time.